Every Saturday from Labor Day until the snow got too deep or the wind got too strong or it simply just got too cold to play. The boys in the neighborhood would gather in our yard for a game of pickup tackle football. My dad, who was a letterman in that sport in high school, played all-time quarterback. And we would play all afternoon until the mothers began to call us home for dinner. My dad was a gifted athlete, lettered in multiple sports in high school. I was athletically challenged at best. He showed great patience over the years, trying to teach me the ropes of the different sports, basketball, baseball, football. Some of it I improved in, most of it I didn't. But he had patience and tried. Oh, how he tried. I remember he noticed one afternoon that I was really struggling with tackling. I just didn't like to get hit. And he took me aside and he said, let's work on that next Saturday morning. And so we got up early and he went out. He said, I think the problem is you wait until somebody runs over you. You need to hit them before they get up to speed. You need to hit them harder than they hit you. That's the trick. He said, let me show you. He gives me the ball, and he says, now go back a, a few yards and try to get past me. And he drops down into his three-point stance. Now, mind you, my dad is about six foot, almost 200 pounds. It's a pretty big three-point stance. But I'm up for the game. I grab the ball like he told me. I run as fast as I can. I juke left, I juke right, and then it hits this thunderous shoulder into my chest. Arms wrap around my legs, lift me off the ground, and deposit me on the ground like a sack of potatoes. Boom! And the next thing I know, I can't breathe. There is no breath in me. I am certain I'm dying. And I look up and there stands my father looming over me, going, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. You had the breath, the wind knocked out of you. Just relax, and it'll be okay. And I didn't feel like it was going to be okay, but it did. It passed. And I played that afternoon. The disciples had the wind knocked out of them that Easter evening. A week ago, they'd been sitting pretty. Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem like a conquering hero, like a king ready to be crowned. By Friday, he was hanging on the cross like a political revolutionary. And they wondered, would they be next? I mean, it was logical. If they killed Jesus, why wouldn't they kill those who followed him? And so they huddled there in the upper room behind locked doors for fear that they would be called upon to die. And there in the midst of their fear and trembling, Jesus shows up. He doesn't knock. He just shows up. Shalom, y'all. Peace be with you. And with that, he breathes on them 
the Ruach Arunai, the breath of God, that breath that breathed over the face of creation, bringing life out of chaos. Tradition would go on to call that wind the Holy Spirit. It is that wind that blows new life into the disciples in that upper room that enables them to see in the midst of the wounded one, the crucified one, the risen Lord. He is alive. He has been raised. And they're so excited that they begin to tell the good news to others, especially to Thomas, one of their brothers who wasn't there that night. But Thomas announces he's not going to believe until he sees his hands, his feet, his wounded side. And so it is the next Sunday. They're all together again in that room, and Jesus shows up, shalom y'all. Hey, Thomas, look at here. See my hands, see my side. Believe. And Thomas announces, my Lord and my God. Thomas gets a bad rap. We call him Doubting Thomas because he needs to see. The truth is that because he wasn't there to receive that gift of new breath, he's still breathless. He still can't believe. He still can't see it. It's not enough to hear that Jesus is alive without that spirit. That spirit enables Thomas and the disciples and us to see Jesus, to see the resurrected one in the midst of the muck and the mire of our daily existence. Without that gift of the Holy Spirit that calls us into community, we are relying on what we can see and feel and touch and taste. And that's why we gather around word and water and bread and wine and a body gathered that we may be helped to see, that we may receive that spirit again and again and again, that together we may reclaim the breath, the Ruach, Adonai, the Spirit. We've been through a lot of breathless times these days. The wind has been repeatedly knocked out of us. COVID did one heck of a number on us. But so too did, does all the political upheaval, the economic insecurity. Personally, we've experienced deaths and illness broken relationships, addictions, chaos, and confusion. And in the midst of it all, Jesus comes to us again and again through that Holy Spirit, calling, gathering, and enlightening us into community. Come and see Come and see me in bread and wine and water and word. Come see me in the body gathered that you may believe. Receive the spirit again and again. Feel the breath. Breathe into these lifeless bones. That you too may go and tell. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we 
have seen him. Amen.